Normally I ask you to stand, but stay seated. It's a little bit longer reading today. But this is a moment in Jesus' ministry that really matters. Jesus got very angry and frustrated with the group of people called Pharisees. They were the religious lay leaders of Jesus' day and time. They ran the Sunday schools and synagogues of Jesus' day and time, and they had become separatists. Do you understand separatists? That is, they didn't want to have to do with anybody who didn't agree with them, who didn't share their opinion and share their particular way of being devoted to God. And Jesus did not share their way of being devoted to God, not completely, and he had conflict with them. So it's going to take like 90 seconds to read this. So. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. Jesus answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that whoever tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had for me is given to God, then that person need not honor the father. So for the sake of your tradition, you make void the word of God. You hypocrites! Isaiah preached about you rightly when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as their doctrines. Then Jesus called the crowd and said to them, listen and understand, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to Jesus, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? Jesus answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind gods of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both fall into a pit. But Peter said to Jesus, explain this to us. Then Jesus said, are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth, enters the stomach, goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands, that does not defile a person. Can you tell that Jesus was mad? Amen? I like words. Do you like words? I don't know why. From the time that language emerged, I just liked words. The way John and Nathan like instruments and music, I've always liked words. I'm embarrassed to tell you the most used app on my iPhone is not the Golf Channel. It's not PGA Tour. It's Webster's Dictionary. I use it all the time. I'll think of a word or hear a word. Or sometimes I want to find a different word, so I just scoot in to Webster's Dictionary. It's there all the time. I'm burning up my data trying to find Webster. And words get old like people do, and sometimes words get so old they just fall out of Webster's Dictionary, and we don't use them anymore. For instance, when was the last time you used the word telephone? I promise you there'll come a day probably in our lifetime when you'll open Webster's Dictionary and go to the T's and the E's and look for telephone and it won't be there. Gone. People don't, uh, that, telephone, what's a telephone? Beeper. You know the word beeper? I said to my son the other day, yeah, the day you were born, I was wearing a beeper. A what? A beeper. A what? 
You know, the thing that goes, bzz, bzz, bzz. oh, you mean a pager? Yeah, a beeper. <laughs> Words, for, but I'll tell you a word that's going to be a word. It's been a word for thousands and thousands of years and has translated into every culture. And this world word will be in the dictionary 200 years from now. It's the word heart. It still makes sense. People still use it. He's hard-hearted. She's soft-hearted. Has a cold heart. Got a soft spot in my heart for you. Love you with all my heart. It's still a word that works everywhere. And when we use it, we know that we're not talking about that little four-chamber organ in our chest that beats and pumps blood. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what motivates a person. Nathan played with a lot of heart this morning. Could you see it? We're talking about what motivates a person, the interior region and heart and soul. Even I used the word just then and you knew exactly what I meant. The word heart and it's a deeply religious word. Jeremiah wrote one time when he was preaching, God is going to write his law on your heart, on your heart. And there'll be a banner that will hang up in the autumn when it rolls around. We always use it from Psalm 51, the words of King David after he was caught in terrible sin. He prayed, oh God, create in me a clean heart. And we know what that means. That doesn't mean that you go to a cardiac surgeon and get little tubes put in. No, no, we're not talking about, talking about a new motivation, forgiveness and mercy, a fresh start. Jesus used the word heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. People who want only to be devoted to God, whose hearts are not muddied up with other desires, chasing after all the things that the world loves. Blessed are those people whose heart longs for God, to see God, to please God, to be devoted to God. Those people are happy. They're going in the right direction. And when someone asked Jesus what true religion was all about, he said to them, the first and most important thing is to love God with your whole heart, with all your heart. And nobody had to raise their hand and say, what does that mean? They understood exactly what Jesus meant. True religion is about your heart. One of the things that I always loved and it just clicked for me in the Methodist church when I started attending way back in 1972. Methodist church doesn't get wrapped around its own axle about this doctrine or that doctrine. We understand it's about your heart. Your heart being connected to God and devoted to God. John Wesley understood that true religion is about a change of heart and getting your heart in the right place. And when Jesus walked to the microphone and started preaching all those years ago in Galilee and in Jerusalem, Israel's heart was in the wrong place. Their heart was not in the right place. Their leaders had confused them. Their leaders had gotten trapped and encumbered with their own understanding of Judaism and of Moses' law. And their understanding of various traditions became more important than the law of God and the heart of God became more important to them. And they got really confused. Traditions that make no sense. And Jesus was not happy about their love of their traditions while they ignored the love of God and the heart of God. But their traditions were so important. One tradition, the tradition of rinsing or washing their hands. Now, this was not about dial soap. This was not about pulling out the Purell before you eat at La Paria to make sure that your hands are sanitized. This is not about the gym and after you get off the elliptical machine, going and getting a spray bottle and a paper towel and wiping your boogery, sweaty hand stuff off of the elliptical machine was not what it was about. It was more arrogant. It was separatist. It's what I call cooties. Do you remember cooties? Cooties. I learned about cooties in the third grade when my friend Russell came to me and said, you don't want to touch a girl. And I said, why? He said, they have cooties. If your baseball glove touches a girl, it'll get cooties all over it. You'll make errors all the time. And that's true. 
That's probably what messed <laughs> Girls have cooties, is what I was told. Well, I had got to sophomore in high school before I had any inkling that that wasn't true. Now I'm old and I'm sure that it's true. You girls have cooties. <laughs> That's not what the Pharisees and the scribes, they had a different understanding. They were separatists. And so when they went out to the grocery store, the marketplace, and they touched something that a Gentile might have touched, they were made unclean. In their mind, they were unclean. Or if they touched something that one of their Jewish brothers or sisters had touched and this Jewish brother or sister was not devoted to God and hadn't been in the, seen in the synagogue since the last Christmas Eve service, they felt like they were made unclean. And they wanted to be clean before God and pure before God. And so they would rinse their hands to say to God and to themselves and to one another, all the unclean world, I don't want anything to do with the unclean world or the unclean people. And so I rinse my hands. And Jesus did not practice that ridiculous tradition. And that tradition was so important to them that they sent a delegation from Jerusalem to Galilee. It was a two-day walk. To say to Jesus, well, you are influencing a lot of people here. And we understand that you do not practice the tradition of rinsing hands. Do you not understand that you might have touched something and be unclean? And it made Jesus mad. And here's why. For Jesus, there were no unclean people. Only unclean behaviors do you understand the difference no unclean people in jesus mind no one was unclean he went and touched lepers went to places where lepers gathered in little groups and colonies he went right into those places that were considered to be unclean and touched people and healed people and they scratched their head and said hey what are you doing that's a, that person's not there were no unclean people to jesus he went to Samaria, who were considered to be a culture and race of people completely unclean. And he went sent down at the well and said to the Samaritan woman, can I have a drink from your water bucket? For Jesus, there were no unclean people, only unclean behaviors. And I ask you to think about that. I almost want to say stop, let's just stop and pray right now, because sometimes we get into our minds that some people are just not clean. They don't live like we live. Their lifestyle's different. They think different, live different, act different. For Jesus, not even people who were Florida Gators were unclean. That's how open he was. Only unclean behaviors. Theft. Murder. Sexual anything goes, come on baby, let's have a good time. Lying, cheating, those were unclean behaviors. Those Jesus opposed strongly and preached against them. But he welcomed everybody, he welcomed everybody. And he got mad at them and said, you hypocrites, open your Bible and read Isaiah the prophet. He's talking about you when he preached and said, these people give me a lot of lip service. They act like they're just deeply religious and devoted. But their hearts, their hearts are miles away, miles away from me. And being a Christian is about getting your heart right with God and your heart right with one another. Christianity is a matter of the heart. Jesus understood that. It made him so mad, he called the disciples together and said, don't follow those people. Don't listen to the people. Simon Peter said, you made those mad. Those are important people in our religious community. And Jesus said, don't listen to them. Do not listen to them. They are blind as a bat. Walk across Highway 9 at 5 o'clock traffic with your eyes closed. But don't follow them. They're going to lead you to a bad place. Their religion is bad and sour and infected. Let me tell you about true religion, said Jesus. It's about your heart. And he, he absolutely confounded Simon Peter and all the boys when he said to them, 
eat anything you want. I know that Moses wrote, you're not supposed to eat catfish because it's a fish without scales. I know that Moses said, you're not supposed to eat pork, but come on, we'll go to Heavy's Barbecue and have ribs. Because when you eat something, think about it, think about it, think about it. When you eat something, it goes into your mouth and into the stomach and it leaves for the sewer. No big deal. But what you harbor in your heart, that determines whether you're clean or unclean, whether you're defiled or undefiled. And the way you speak and the way you act will indicate whether or not you're clean or unclean. Not too long ago, I don't want to say where, but I was hitting a golf ball with some guys I didn't know. And they clearly didn't know me either because their language indicated they didn't know me. And we made the turn, went in and had a Coke and washed my hands. As we were drying our hands, the guy said to me, so, uh, man, you must be a golf pro. You hit the ball really well. You're even par. Are you, what do you do for a living? I said, oh, man, you should. I said, well, I'm pastor of the Alfred Methodist Church. Threw the paper towel in. I said, you obviously know my boss. You've been calling on him the whole time. <laughs> I just walked out. And he went to his buddies and I could hear him. For Jesus, no unclean people, just unclean behaviors. You with me? True religion, true religion, the depth of Christianity is about your heart, about doing the right thing, about kindness and love and goodness and justice, values that matter. I can give you an example of true religion. I was in Publix last week. Lisa said, we're out of milk. That's why I stopped and get some milk. So I went in and got a quart of milk, put in a little basket. And I said, I need some shredded wheat, too. So I got some shredded wheat. I said, I'm sort of hungry. It was late. I didn't eat much for lunch. So I said, I'll go over to the deli. They make a great deli sandwich over at Publix. Went over and waited and got a Publix sandwich and put it in the little basket. And then I went to pay. And why does everybody in this community go to the Publix at 3 in the afternoon? I mean, I went to check out. It was like the 147 people standing in line. I thought, oh, Lord, I just want to set this basket down on the floor and leave. Even the, even the aisle that said 10 items or less had like 12 people in it. I saw, I saw a lady. I couldn't see what was in her basket. She was the only person in line. So I heard it over there and got in line behind her. And when I got in line behind her, I realized why nobody was behind her. She had everything public sells in her basket. <laughs> I thought, I don't hope her American Express card can cover that. And she turned around and looked at me and saw that I had a quart of milk, some shredded wheat, and a public sandwich. And she said to me, you know what she said to me? She said, why don't you go ahead of me? And as I walked by, I put my arm around her and kissed her on the head and said, ma'am, please join my church. Please join my church. <laughs> That's called kindness. Do you follow them? That's kindness. That's true religion. That's something about your heart. Her heart was in the right place. Not too long ago, I was playing golf at the course where I like to play. When I got home, I realized I left my sunglasses in the cart. And I don't want my wife to know, but I mean, I paid $137 for those sunglasses. I mean, Oakley, the word Oakley mean anything to you? And I get thought to myself, oh, Lord, those are gone. Just forget it. Just forget it. Just go on Amazon and order another pair, pair right now before you, you even think about it. But I thought, ah, I'll give it one day, maybe. So I went up to the course the next day, and I said, Dad, I said, Dad, I hate to even ask, but I was here yesterday, and I play, and I have my sunglasses in the car. He just reached underneath and pulled them out. I said, these yours? I said, those are mine. I said, who turned those in? He said, one of the cart boys, I can't even remember who. That's true religion right there. That's heart in the right place. I don't care if the person is a Jew or in a mosque this morning. Their heart is in the right place. 
True religion said Jesus is about the heart, not about what you eat, not about traditions. He was mad. So, yeah, you wash your hands this way and that way, but you're not good to your mom or your daddy. You just let them do without your affection and without your time. And you even say you don't have money to spend for them because you made a promise to the building campaign. You may or may not keep the promise to the building campaign, but you use it as to say, well, I can't help my mom or dad. It's the law of God that you honor and love your mom and dad. And Jesus called the people over and said, don't listen to them. They will lead you into a ditch. It's about your heart being in the right place. It's not about what you eat. No unclean people, no unclean people only unclean behaviors said jesus think that all the way through and learn what it means to be devotedly christian and it's fun when you see somebody's heart we understand that that's who they are when and sometimes you can't help it your heart just you just show your heart a bride walks down the aisle of the church father walks with her when it comes that moment who gives this woman to be married to this man? And with a frog in its throat and tears in his eyes, he says, her, her, her mother not. And you can see his heart. And he's embarrassed. But we're all touched. Or someone stands at a ball game and the national anthem's being played and we're standing there with hands over your heart. And I look to my left, and there's a man there who's wearing a hat that says World War II and the ship that he was on, and tears coming out of his eyes, and his heart's just right there. And in that instant, I understand, just as you do, that he loves his country with all his heart, and that true religion is about engaging your heart. It's fun to see people's hearts change. Jesus came to change the hearts and lives of people. And until he could get to your heart, he knew there was no change. He wasn't trying to pe make people more and more religious. Zacchaeus had a change of heart, was wealthy, and didn't care a whit about anybody else. But then Jesus said something to him. I wish I knew what it was that changed his heart. And he gave half everything he had to North Fulton Community Charities. What a heart. Mary Magdalene was a girl you wouldn't take home to mama and then she listened to jesus preach and what he had to say and realized that she was forgiven and her heart was completely changed she was altogether devoted to him change of heart that's true religion that's real religion that's what that is i, I know a man in kentucky he's friends with a friend of mine and I love to play golf with this guy because he played football for the University of Kentucky. And he's still famous in Kentucky. You can go and eat in some restaurants and people go, how do you know Jim? And Jim, boy, he would tear your head off. He would tear your head off. And I talked to him one time. I said, Jim, did you go to church? No, no. He said, I didn't grow up in church. He said, I was mean. I was mean. He said, I had a football coach who taught me at the University of Kentucky, taught me how to hate. When I got down on the line, I looked at that guy in front of me and I hated him. And he handed the ball off to us. I hated that ball. The guy carried I hated him. And if I could hurt him, I would hurt him. He said, the University of Kentucky football coach taught me how to hate. He said, but I started going to church when I met Lindsay. And we played golf together, and Jesus taught me how to love. Jesus taught me how to love, and I had a change of heart. At a Wednesday night prayer meeting, he just got up one, said to Lindsey Davis, I want to join the church right here, right now. I want to join. My heart just changed. And he joined at a Wednesday night service. True religion is about what's going on right in here. And I don't mean thump, thump, thump. I mean it's God's voice there when i served the church in covington georgia we had a man in that church named too tall rainy i don't even know his name <laughs> i did his funeral service and i had to ask his wife what's too tall's name 
And I, to this, in this very moment that I'm talking to you, I can't recall what his first name was. Everybody just called him Too Tall or Mr. Too Tall. He would show up in church every Sunday with 50, 75 Tootsie Pops. And every child, every child, red, yellow, black, white, no unclean people at Too Tall, every child got a Tootsie Pop. And sometimes if there were a few left over, there was a preacher or two to get a Tootsie Pop. <laughs> Too tall, rainy. When we had the confirmation class, we said to the kids in the confirmation class, 11, 12 years old, okay, we're going to bring in some of the church people. You can ask them questions about what it means to be a Christian. You get to pick who we invite in, and you can ask them questions. Immediately, all the kids said, Mr. Too tall, Mr. Too tall. They wanted to ask him about being a Christian. So he came in. Six, all six foot seven of him. And kids asked him questions like, why aren't dinosaurs in the Bible? It's a good one. Try to figure that one out. <laughs> Mr. Tutal, can, can you explain the virgin birth to us? Dr. Martin tried, but he didn't do very well. And they asked him all kinds of questions, and he was straight and simple and to the point. One little boy threw his hands up in the air. Mr. Too Tall, even then, probably was like 94 years old. And the little boy said, Mr. Too Tall, when did you become a Christian? When did you become a Christian, Mr. Too Tall? And Mr. Too Tall ran. He said to the little boy, I remember it like it was yesterday. Well, son, I became a Christian when I, asked Je- when I asked Jesus to come into my heart, that's when I became a Christian. The little boy was thinking chronology and time. Mr. Tutal was thinking eternity. And so I have a question. I'll conclude the sermon with a question if you don't mind. Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Have you asked him? That's what it means to be a Christian, you know. To say to Jesus, I want to be like you. I want to follow you. Please come into my heart. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your goodness and mercy, you sent to us your own son so that he could live in this world that we call home. And so that he could live in our hearts and lives forever and ever. And so we pray now that he'll enter into our hearts. If there's someone here who's never had him in their heart, we pray that they'll ask now. And we pray that all of us will ask again and renew our commitments to Christ. And that we'll live our whole life with a Christian heart. In our Lord's name we pray to you. Amen.